Hey, hello there. This is Ben once again with you for Studio on the Lake. Today, this is a uh, commission piece to start probably two, maybe three uh, s sections to this one. Unfortunately, they're a little bit longer. It's going to be a green wing teal, and it's going to be a pair eventually. This is the female I'm working on now with the head. Here's a chunk of uh, basswood out of the shed, uh, air dried. There's an old study piece that I did many years ago and didn't quite finish. Gives me a good head shape to it. Get a good start there with that. Pin it in a little bit. There it is cut out on the bandsaw. Put those center lines in. I apologize for how long this is. It turned out to be uh, 22 minutes, 23 minutes. That's a study head. You can get uh, those from various different places. I got these probably 20, 25 years ago. Uh, they're an actual bird beak and head. Back when I was doing decorative decoy, decoys, uh, competition decoys, each little detail had to be perfect. I don't do that so much anymore. I won't uh, put all the details in this 100% on the beak on the other side. As with most of these videos, if you uh, look in the lower right hand corner, you can go ahead and click to subscribe. It gives me some reason to keep cranking these things out. This one's going to be kind of fun. Uh, this is going to be the the hen of the green wing teal, and uh, it's going to be a decorative, meaning all the feathers are carved on it. And then I'll go ahead and uh, this is the first one you'll actually get to see me do a paint job on, uh, Josonia acrylics paints and that'll be a video probably all by itself in there and then uh, I'm not gonna film doing the Drake per se you, you might catch a little bit of that as you go through but you will see uh, both of them together uh, they should turn out to be pretty nice refining the beak down a little bit that study bill once again for those of you that are new to the channel I do use references I, I don't have a reference in front of me right now uh, normally I'll have a reference up on a computer uh, laptop sitting off on the side somewhere and I'll keep looking back at that and in this case the the head and the body are separate pieces and this video is uh, just the head and you're gonna see that it, uh, and I finished off one side of this and uh, I'll finish the other side off off camera because it's uh, a duplication. Switch to a power carver around in the head out. That's those uh, yellow cuts all bits. If you go ahead and look down in the description, uh, there's a description of most of the tools that I use. That's a little micro power carver. Uh, runs about that one. That black one runs about 30,000 RPM. If you see the blue one in there, it's it's 40,000. I really can't tell the difference between the uh, the two of them. They have different sizes of collets in them for two different size bits that I use. Rounding the head out. If you're doing one of these, you need to just take your time. 
wood carving is, is subtractive. You take away what doesn't belong there. So a lot of times it's difficult to get it back where you want it. If you're painting, you can go ahead and paint over it. But once you've taken away too much, it's gone. You can't really fix that. I'm starting to define the bill down. If the bill's not right, the head doesn't look right. So it doesn't do any good to do the head first. Uh, set the bill up, it gives you the placement for the eyes. Everything else kind of falls into place after that. There's a wood burner. I use that uh, as a stop cut. Go ahead and, and cut those lines out uh, it will get carved down both directions to that. I apologize for the, the camera seems to go in and out of focus. It's a little diamond ball that allows me to get back down in there and kind of contour away, leaving two rounded edges where the, the bill and that meet. And there, there's a lot more refinement going to happen to this thing. Put the eye groove in. This eye groove defines the top of the head, uh, the top of the cheeks, and uh, obviously the eye. <coughs> there are techniques for making sure those are centered. Some of mine are not on occasion. I went ahead and ground them a little bit bigger. I think those are getting 10 millimeter eyes. Maybe 12 millimeter eyes, I don't know. Between 10 and 12. They're set in with uh, that JB Weld Quickwood. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread for setting eyes. It's uh, really neat. Two part epoxy. Dries in about 30 minutes, gives you more than ample working time. Relatively cheap. And you can uh, sculpt it around the eyes with uh, a knife, which we'll do here in a second. Fill the socket up, press the eyes in. This, this is more than adequate to hold those in. It squeezes out a little bit around the eye, uh, almost building an eyelid at the same time. Now it's time to go ahead and uh, make sure that they're about the same height and distance, pointed in the same direction. Can have one wonky eye looking in one direction, the other one looking another way. There it is, with the quick wood put in there. Now I'll take a knife and, and remove almost all of that, leaving just a little bit around the, the eye there. And then I'll go ahead and indent that with uh, the eyelid and feathers and stuff. And later on, when it's all done, just before paint, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a little more detail work. Again, with the quick wood, once you paint that uh, on, on these decoys, and these will be painted, you won't uh, be able to tell the difference between the wood and whatnot. Since that eye is round, you, you just can't get that eye set in there correctly into the carving without uh, doing this. I guess you could, but uh, you drive yourself insane trying it. Hard to tell what I was doing on that last little piece there, but I, I am actually kind of putting in the feather contours and going up there, and you can, you can see what was left on that one. Back to that diamond ball, defining the cheek. <coughs> Excuse me. Hard to tell, but I, I am kind of going in the direction that the feathers are going to go with this. It starts to get a contour. They fade back away from the eye. And just in case I get confused, uh, I'll draw in some reference lines to keep to where stuff goes. General direction.
Here's what we have so far. Looking good. Kind of burning in uh, feather reference lines. A lot more detail to go after this. Get, just getting a flow. This one's going to kind of be holding its head down a little bit, kind of bowing uh, a little bit. Defining the top of the head where it comes away from that, that eye ridge. That is speeded up four times. A lot of the video is three to four times speeded up. Still quite a bit of time involved in the, the whole process. That's a flame bit and it's a, a diamond bit. They last forever if you treat them nicely. Coming along, looking good. I think there are quite a few videos out there on carving a decoy head. Uh, my technique is fairly similar to the majority of them. Perhaps a little more freelance than some of those. Eye sight line going in there and the feather direction. Starting to set it in with the burning pin. There we go. Finally got a focus there. Something about that red, I don't, I think maybe I shouldn't have wore a red shirt. Seems to uh, suck in the focus. It's not even close to the final process, so I'll uh, take some diamond bits over this and stones and, and uh, various different shapes. So when you hear a decoy is, a decorative decoy is stoned and then burned or burned and then stoned, what they're talking about is taking little ceramic stones or a diamond stone and cutting feather shapes and then coming back and over and burning uh, more detail into it and then uh, doing that back and forth two or three times. Here this is speeded up four times faster. And again, I'm just kind of getting a direction here. And you'll see later on that the direction of those changes just a little bit as it gets more defined. Refined. Each of those burn lines and each of the stone lines when you put paint on them and start doing the highlights with the paint, it, uh, it, it's, it's magical. It turns, uh, turns into real, real feather looking depending on, on how well you paint. Each and every one of those uh, little marks, uh, a lot of them you can't even see uh, through the camera on there, really show up nice. a little little diamond ball taking some of the high spots away and as you can see a lot of the burning is going away too you do have to be careful not to nick the if you nick that glass eye uh, those are Tohican glass eyes, by the way. Uh, if you nick that eye, there's really no way to fix it. If it's uh, 
not that important of a carving. You can take a little bit of finger, fingernail polish or lacquer and put it on there and, and get away with it sometimes. It does degrade it a little bit though. detail in the beak I think like the look of it try to leave them so that they have a smile my wife judges them based on on if they're happy or not and give them a little artificial smile there's one of those stones that's kind of a it's got a taper to it I sharpen it to a taper and I'll go in and cut individual feather marks or flow feather flow lines on that Also do that uh, uh, stoning with a V-shaped diamond bit. I think I buy them in packs of tens, and and they put a real fine mark in there that does, like I said, show through the paint. have to dress these stones every once in a while. This, you know, this one is, is cutting and burning, or burnishing as the case may be, as it goes through. I did leave the other side till the end just did the one side. Normally I'll work both sides at the same time. One of the ways to keep your carving looking right is not to spend a whole lot of time on any one particular part. If you've watched a painter, they won't focus a whole lot on one part of the painting. They'll stop and then go to another and come back. And, and like anything else, if it's not looking right, leave it for a couple days and you'd be surprised. Sometimes I, I leave something that I'm not particularly liking the looks of, come back a couple days later and really like it. Other things I've left and uh, thought was real happy with it, then come back in a couple days and take a look at it and uh, decide that it needs to go in a different direction or completely have a do-over. That's why we have a wood stove in the studio out here. <coughs> I like uh, where it's going now. It's getting a lot of the details are in there. There's what we started with, just the eye socket, cheeks not defined, you can kind of see. There's that study cast for the, the beak study cast. They come in all different species. setting out the, the nose holes on that. They have a little ridge that sits up around them. And here, we're trying to get the, the smile in the, in the beak line there. Back to the burning pin. You can see that I'm leaving that ridge that's around the nose there. I'll come back with a, a little diamond ball bit and uh, take a lot of that burn, the burn marks away and cut back to clean wood. I'm, I'm really only going a hair or two down in that. There's not a whole lot of definition there. Starting to get to the fun part now. There's where the bill goes under the upper and the you have a little uh, a nail, for lack of reference, on the end there of their beak. And that sticks up a little bit proud. 
A lot of that comes from the, the study bill, the cast bill. There's that little diamond bit. Use it kind of like a pencil eraser. And just gently take away. It's not very aggressive. And it leaves a rounded contoured surface going up into the nostrils and uh, down into the beak. Although I didn't do both sides of the head, I did do both sides of the beak. That's got to be symmetrical. The head's really symmetrical also, it's just that I haven't uh, rounded out the cheek lines or the head lines on the, on the back side there. A lot of times when you have carvings, the old carvings had one side they called the romance side. Uh, carousel animals are a good indication of that. One side was always facing outwards and the carvers spent a lot of time embellishing that side and then the in, inside or the back side that no one could really see from the outside they, they left the carving fairly rudimentary. I find that a lot of things I like to see, the, the birds I tend to uh, they tend to be facing left when they're in front of me, the head to the left side and the tail to the right side uh, meaning that the left side of their beak or their face is, is one that I spend a lot more time on uh, as I display them. For some reason, everything seems to naturally flow that way for me, and I have to make a concerted effort to uh, do one in the opposite direction. My brain just doesn't, doesn't work with the head on the right side for some reason. Now the fun part, this is a little bit more of the detailed burning. This is getting pretty close to the, the final uh, that I'm starting to put in now. This is the fun part. This is actually the relaxing part. I can sit here and do this for hours and hours. And people will tell me that it takes a lot of patience to burn those thousands of lines in there. But if you're sitting in a chair here with the TV going in the background, uh, some mindless program on something like Star Trek or something along those lines. It's quite relaxing It's fun to see the the product come out. I, I really like the the burned look and I, I probably overkill it later on you'll see me do a loon and uh, The burn lines won't be anywhere near as as detailed as as on something like this And there you have it. Got a little bit of a smile. Should uh, pass the test. I will go back and put a little bit more eyelid on there. And, and that side, obviously, I didn't do anything. <coughs> That's a little, uh, this is a case it's a steel brush, but I, I use brass brushes too. Takes, takes a lot of the charcoal uh, off of them and lightens them up. When I leave the burn uh, for a day, it, it really starts to lighten up. And I can come back and burn over that. Take the wire brush, take some off, burn over it. This one uh, will get some more when I mount the head uh, to the rest of the body. But uh, there you go. There's a head. Go ahead and subscribe if you like it. And uh, stand by for the rest of the bird. Thanks for watching.